Okay, today we're going to talk about evolution. Evolution means what we are referring to now is evolution of the human species, species as such. So, what is it exactly you want to say, Dimitri? Yes, good evening. Basically, what I want. Basically, I'm ba I, I'm I'm reporting on my on my research in general, and yeah, the evolution of the species. What what I have what I have been finding, and and uh, and basically what I what I've been finding brings a whole lot of different areas together, because many many researchers have been in an, independently of each other have started to connect to like a similar. Thing, and I call this the real singularity. People like Ike and Lipton and and many other people are have been um, converging on the understanding that consciousness and mind really lie at the heart of it all. But in my work, not only how does my work in a way complement or this. Other these other voices around the world, in, in, that have been looking, uh, seeing what is really what's the next step, is that in a way my work is bringing it. I feel it. I feel that it's bringing it all together in terms of the evolution of the species. And what I, what I've been finding is that the human. So all of these things are coming together in in this in this uh, form and that is that the human being is at the verge of taking another step in evolution and the book of revelation the bible speaks about that the world was created in six days and then god took the seventh day to rest what 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 that really is is saying was saying to us is that the the the, the creation was not finished the seventh after the seventh day the creation would be finished meaning that the species was not complete we were we were we are like a what i call a cat, a caterpillar and the and the, the the completion of the species which i call the next step what we are evolving into would and as being what we really are and this is what lipton talks about or others in terms of be, becoming aware of who we really are is that we are about to take that step from the caterpillar to the butterfly, and in a way, then um, what what we are realizing thus is that um, all of this talk about the mind and consciousness, and that uh, that that actually there are no limitations. That are that whatever we really believe is what we can create. That's all coming together in in the sense that this being that we are that is supposed to be hatched out of the cocoon of the caterpillar is a being that is multidimensional and that has no limitations in terms of space and time. And this is a and it's it is much closer than we think because. It's not just like looking at certain isolated cases where we see that beliefs drive matter. For instance, the mother that saves the, the baby under the car or people that can drink poison and not get sick if, if they really believe that they're not going to get sick. But what, 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 we're, what we're seeing in actually happening on the planet is the birth of, a, of this species where we are we are actually this 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 spe this being is no more in the, in normal space time where we have these limitations and all of these different examples are are actually glimpses of the birth of this being that is um what i would almost call like a human angel or a being that is uh lives in this expanded ecology, this expanded space-time where beliefs are directly connected to matter 
Whereas the being in the cocoon, if you wish, which is the being that was not finished, which is what most of us are still, is caught in what they would call then this matrix or this um, reality where there's this sense of separateness to the surrounding and to the physical world and thus where there is not this direct connection between consciousness and beliefs and matter. You see? So my work actually is showing that these are not little incidental cases of where we see as it were, the bending of space-time by a mother. By, by So when we see a mother and a child or twins, or then we get glimpses of this telepathic bond where we see that the mind is, 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 is the driver of matter. But all of this comes together in this picture of the birth of the, the rebirth, if you wish, of this caterpillar into the butterfly. The, the, the ending, the, the completion of the species. And this is the next step that we are witnessing on the, on the planet. Okay, my question to you is now, how does this relate to singularity? Because mostly, according to me, people relate singularity to some kind of a big architect, a machine, something like that. I, I, how, how does this relate to singularity, this change? Yeah. Well, it, 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 in a way, it is the, sing the true singularity, because what we're witnessing is, the connect is, is that, that singularity is actually best understandable like this, and that is that w we are people, for instance, in completely different countries start to connect to the same message, independent of each other. So singularity is where there is, as it were, a collapse of space and time. There is no more distance, there is no more temp temporality, meaning that there is this telepathic uh, collaboration or connection between people. And that's true singularity. And the, the, what I would call then is the, sing the, the, the false singularity, if you wish, is also, as it were, bank, uh, the idea of a collective mind, but it's more a kind of a hive mind merging into a kind of a mainframe computer machine-ish concept of a mainframe. But with this, this singularity is, as it, um, you could almost say, it's the, it, it, it comes at the cost of the individual, meaning that the individual has to be, as it were, deleted away and then you have this collective mind this hive mind and and the true singularity has nothing to do with that the true singularity is that individuals true individuals by connecting to their deeper real truth within start to connect to what Jung called the collective unconscious which is also a collective mind like a mainframe but this is not at the at the experience at the expense of the individual. You see, then you have people like Ike and Lipton and and, and, and other uh, people speaking the same message, including myself, but we we have no contact with each other. It, and it's because we then start to connect to this deeper level of consciousness or self, which you call the collective unconscious, where, where you find this oneness and this is, uh, and, and, but this is a the whole different one is, it's a kind of a telepathic connection that we share, but not at the expense of the individual. And, um, and, and this, this um, next step that we are taking of the species has every, is, is the step into singularity, in what I would call in the, the true singularity which is where we step into a, a world, an ecology, where there is no more space and time limitations. And that's um, um, all, the, all the sacred, in terms of the sacred books, all of the sacred traditions and their Bibles tend to converge also at the, in, at the, in, their, in terms of their end prophecy, like Taoism, Christianity, Islam, 
Buddhism, Hinduism, they all in their end prophecies tend to connect to it. It's almost as if their end prophecies, it becomes one prophecy. And that's because at the deepest level, we, we become back one. You see? And um, that's basically like all of, all of that is symptomatic of the fact that we are taking that next step. Um, we are, as it were, re being reborn from the caterpillar into this butterfly, into this uh, new ecology. We are, we are in a com direct telepathic connection with everything. And that's what we, f we see glimpses of that now in terms, for instance, of mother-child relationships uh, or twins or m what I would call glitches in the matrix. You see, the matrix would be then this cocoon and the glitches would be then moments that we look, we, we get to see the, that what is beyond the matrix. And so this is this, uh, in, 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 in essence, we are like in this womb and we are about to be born, reborn out of this womb. And out of this womb, you find this um, telepathic connection to everything this direct connection to everything and you see but my, um, for me it's important to place this into this bigger context um, you know to prof it's not just um, incidental cases of where the mind goes beyond space and time this is literally at the end of a cycle that what I call the the two fishes in the sea pieces. We're now going to Aquarius. The two fishes in the sea are that's that's where we are at. They, they you can see that all as yin and yang, or the excel and the, the 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 two cells that form the ba the feet the the fetus. The mother ha gives her cell and the father. The sperm cell and this egg cell. And these two merge, these are the two fishes. And they merge and then you get a baby. And that baby then borns out of the sea of aquar of species. So we are getting out of that sea of the pieces and outside of that sea we are we are entering a new world. And those of us that start to connect telepathically around the world you can say that they, these are the first uh, people that are entering this new ecology right here on earth and it's within this context that I think it all comes together um, and then you get that so indeed the in terms of what I said in the beginning, then you get the end of the seventh day of creation. And then what is born out of this womb, the world is right now like this womb. And what is born out of that is this com completed prod, uh, being. And in the dreams, you see, I, I, let, I am I'm heavily, heavily guided by dreams. And when I help people to, to, to complete this merge between the yin and the yang, what I get is in dreams is that people get